For the following set of problems, I'm looking at cases where I'm taking integrals of quotients. We've not discussed a quotient rule for integration. And so one of the tools that you have that's available to you is to try to integrate the function using reciprocal relationships. Um, specifically, if you can write the function as a reciprocal, the integral of a reciprocal, reciprocal function is the natural log of that function. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of these. First one, this is a reciprocal function, so the derivative um, of the inside function is the only thing I'm going to have to consider here. Um, this is going to be a natural log integral. Um, the big thing is the derivative of the inside function is 5, so I'm going to have to balance that by multiplying by 1 fifth on the outside of the integral. And with this setup, this should be very easy to do. Remember, this derivative of the inside function will get pulled back into the integral as I go through the integration process. So I'm really just taking the integral of the reciprocal, which is the natural log of the absolute value of 5x plus 3. Remember, I can't take the natural log of negative values. So it's got to be an absolute value. Uh, I've got that 1 fifth out in front. And remember, any time you're taking an indefinite integral, you do need to remember to add that c constant at the end. Second example here, once again, it's sort of a reciprocal function. Um, you may want to rewrite this by dividing a constant out in front of parentheses, or out in front of the integration symbol in this case. And of course, in this case, we know that the integral of a reciprocal function is the natural log of that expression, specifically the absolute value of that, and the derivative of the inside function is 1, so I don't need to take that into consideration here. I have a constant of 7 out in front, and I add my constant value, and I'm done. My third example here, again, anytime we've got a quotient, check and see if you can rewrite it as a reciprocal. The key here to being able to do the reciprocal integration is having information that is related to the derivative of the inside function as the numerator. And if you'll notice here, this is literally the derivative of the denominator. So I have that derivative of my inside function there already. I'm really not going to have to make a lot of adjustments as far as that goes. I prefer to set this up as a reciprocal times the derivative of its inside function dx. That's the derivative of the inside function. It'll get pulled back into that function when we go through the integration process. And remember, in general, the integral of a reciprocal function is the natural log of the absolute value of that reciprocal, that function of which you're taking the reciprocal. So that's x squared plus 5x minus 3 plus c. That gets pulled back into the function. There's my final answer. That's all I've got there. And finally, on number four, same kind of thing. You'll notice the derivative of the inside function here, um, if this is going to be read as a reciprocal, the derivative of the inside function is going to be negative, two to the, uh, negative 2 e to the x. That's close to what I have in the numerator. So I'm going to rewrite this as a reciprocal. It's going to be 1 over 1 minus 2 e to the x times the derivative of the inside function. Now, I already have an e to the x here. Okay, I'm going to need a negative 2 e to the x as my derivative of my inside function. So I'm going to rewrite that with a negative 2 there, balance with a negative 1 half out in front. So again, the derivative of the inside function, dx, gets pulled back into that function when I take the integral. Uh, the integral, of course, is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of that denominator. 1 minus 2 e to the x. I've got that negative 1 half constant out there in front. This gets pulled back into the function. And then again, because I'm taking an indefinite integral, I've got to add my plus c at the end. And I finish the problem. Continuing with the integration of reciprocal functions, I have several other reciprocal functions here. Um, first of all, I have secant squared of 4x over the tangent of 4x. Notice the inside functions are the same. And the important thing here to pick up on is the fact that secant squared is the derivative of tangent of x. And because of that, I have the derivative in the numerator, or something very close to the derivative in the numerator, which means I'm going to be able to do this as an inverse function. So to take a look at this, 
Um, I'm going to rewrite this as an inverse. I'm going to write it as 1 over the tangent of 4x times that derivative of that inside function. But be careful because the derivative of tangent of 4x because of that inside function is 4 secant squared 4x. So I'm going to need a 4 out in front. I'm going to need to balance that with a 1 fourth. Now I can take my integral. Uh, of course, the integral is going to be my constant times the natural log of the absolute value of the tangent of 4x. And again, since this is an indefinite integral, I'm going to have to add c at the end. Okay. The next integral here is the, uh, the integral of tangent of x dx. And this is one that you can either memorize an integral for, or you can do a small trig substitution here and turn it into something that's actually a reciprocal function. Um, the short rule here, if you want to know the short rule, is that the integral of tangent of x dx is actually just going to be the natural log of secant of x plus c, if you just straight memorize that. Uh, if, I, if I had a tangent of 5x, I would need a derivative of the inside function on the outside, balance it with, with the 1 fifth, it would be 1 fifth natural log secant of 5x plus c. Same kind of thing. Um, if you forget that fact, you can rewrite the integral of tangent of x as sine of x over the cosine of x dx. Keep in mind that this can be written as a reciprocal function. This can be written as 1 over the cosine of x times the sine of x. Be careful here, the derivative of the inside function is negative sine of x, which means I need to balance that with the negative on the outside. Now I can take my integral here. Of course, the derivative of the inside function in the dx would get pulled back in in the reversal of the derivative process, the integration. Uh, that's going to end up being the negative natural log of cosine of x, the absolute value, plus c. And you look at that and you say, wait a second, didn't you say that the derivative is the natural log of secant of x, and meanwhile you've got a cosine of x here. Keep in mind, this is a logarithm. Uh, that's a negative 1 coefficient out in front. I can swing that negative 1 coefficient around like this. It's not an inverse cosine. That's a negative 1 exponent, which means that I can take the reciprocal. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And so that's now going to be a positive because I've moved that negative exponent into exponential form. Secant of x plus c. So this would be correct. This would also be correct. And of course, you can just memorize this as well. Um, the final example here, the integral of secant of 5x dx. I would encourage you to memorize this. Really, I'd encourage you to memorize any of the trig integrals. Um, the integral of secant of x dx is just the natural log of secant of x plus the tangent of x, all in absolute value. Um, in this case, of course, because I have a derivative of an inside function that I have to consider, uh, I need to have a 5 dx here. I need to balance that with the 1 fifth. So it's going to be 1 fifth the natural log, and it's going to be the secant of that same inside function. Remember, the inside function does not change. Secant of 5x plus tangent of 5x, and because it's an integral, I also need to have that plus c at the end. Three final examples of integration problems that you need to be able to do for this chapter. Um, first of all, you need to be able to take the integral of an exponential function. And keep in mind, this can be very simple. Um, for example, here, if you know what the derivative of 5 to the x power looks like, the derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x times the natural log of the base, which is just 5. Remember that the natural log of 5 is really just a constant value, so all I'm doing is multiplying by that. The integral is the reverse of that process, so I'm going to divide by the natural log of 5. And that's all that's going on here. So uh, that's just going to be 5 to the x divided by the natural log of 5 plus c, and I'm done. Next example here. This is really something we've been doing for quite a long time now. 
Um, this is just reversing the power rule and the chain rule. So I have something raised to the second power. Think of it u to the second power, if you want to think of it in those terms. Okay. And so as a result, I'm going to have u to the third power divided by 3. And of course, that inside function stays the same. Uh, remember that I also need to take care of the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of the inside function in this case is 4, which means I need a 4 dx here has to be balanced with a 1 fourth. So in addition to that, this 4 dx is going to get pulled back as a function when I take the integral. That 1 fourth constant, of course, is going to stay out there out in front, and then I have my plus c. You can write this several different ways. I would probably write it as 4x minus 9 cubed all over 12 plus c. Uh, you can also write it as 1 12th 4x minus 9 cubed plus 3. And the final example here. Uh, it is a secant to the fourth power. And you look at this and you think, well, it's a product. We don't really know how to take the integral of a product unless it has something to do with a product times the derivative of the inside function. Um, and of course, you notice here, the secant to the fourth is the same thing as secant of x raised to the fourth power. So the inside function here potentially could be the secant of x. The problem, the derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. I need a secant x tangent x being multiplied by that. Well, if you look at this, really I can just rewrite this. I can borrow a secant x here, that's going to give me a secant of x to the third. Borrow one secant x, use that as my derivative of my inside function, and I have something that looks like that. There is my derivative of the inside function that's going to get pulled back into the function when I take the integral. Uh, meanwhile, this is a u cubed, so this is going to be something taken to the fourth divided by four. And of course, in this case, that inside function is secant of x. So it's secant of x raised to the fourth power all over 4. And then, of course, because that's an indefinite integral, I need to add a c. Um, and that's something that you want to take into account there. So keep in mind, you can shift these things around a little bit. Try to identify your inside function. Make sure you've got the derivative of your inside function being multiplied by that function. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to reverse the chain rule. Something very important that you want to keep in mind on these problems.